This non-league club has a history of helping develop young professional footballers to reach the highest levels of the game. But not everyone's journey is the same. We're going to speak to the player released from a Premier League club who still has ambitions of reaching the top of the game. The academy professional who is experiencing the intensity of a loan move to a non-league football club and find out what they can learn from a manager that has already lived out their dreams of playing in the Premier League. Bognor Regis Town have already helped these players reach the top of the football pyramid. Brighton's Lewis Dunk was 17 when he joined the Rocks on loan for two months. He's since gone on to represent England. Luton striker Elijah Adebayo also had a spell with the non-league side on loan from Fulham. And the former Brighton youngster Tommy Elphick joined Bognor Regis Town in 2005 before going on to play in the Premier League with Bournemouth. And this is the man responsible for developing the next future stars. Robbie Blake scored Burnley's first ever goal in the Premier League. His stunning volley helped the Clarets beat Manchester United 1-0 to record a famous victory at Turf Moor. So why did the former Premier League striker decide to move into non-league management at Step 3 side Bognor Regis Town? The, the opportunity came about when you know I was first in coach at Portsmouth and then obviously left there with, when Kenny was in charge, Kenny, Kenny Jacket. As football, you, you try and just stay in the game as much as you possibly can and it's such a short window that you know you're easily forgotten. I felt like this opportunity came up here to go along with Jack Pierce, who's obviously been here for 50 years and been there, seen it and done it. And I was still in the in the process of being really young and inexperienced at managing and coaching. So yes. I felt you know to go down to this level uh, and see how it works. It's it's opened my eyes up, but also it, you know I, f I feel I haven't played at the highest level. And now managing at this level, for me, sometimes it goes unnoticed that I feel like non-league football is a bedrock of English football and it's so unique. You know, you get these volunteers who would just do anything for the football club for no money and stuff like that. And you, and you see where I've played and everything's, <laughs> everything's paid for and everything's put on. But I just think to see the other side of the game, it's so refreshing and, and so great. And, you know, I'm in a privileged position because even though, you know, we're, in, we're a step three team, I feel really lucky to have this opportunity to manage this football club. You said it opened your eyes when you came down to this level. What were the biggest surprises? I think how you just run the club and, and almost when I said about the volunteer and about yeah. people just going that extra yard for people that they don't need to. You know, it's just come down for a hobby or enjoy the weekends doing something for the good of the football club and the community than worrying about, you know, getting your pockets lined. So I think they're the biggest things, but also, you know, how to, to manage and how to manage at this, this level with the resources sometimes you get on trying to wheel and deal like <laughs> in the in the correct way but yeah. you know it, it, and and also for us the league we're in it's very difficult for us to recruit you know because we're not in in the pool of like a london area where you get so many players to choose from you know dropouts from the clubs in the london side of it we we haven't got that we obviously got brighton we've got portsmouth bournemouth but it's very difficult for them to say go and play at step three <laughs> straight away so you know we got to try and do we do our due diligence with with the work and stuff but it, it's still it's not easy you've made two loan signings this week how did those conversations start and how did you get the boys in it's very difficult because last year we had like nine loans and that was just an absolute nightmare not for the fact of the players yeah. it was just they're not what they weren't our players so it was very difficult and we made sort of a promise in the close season to try and get our own players and luckily we did but you probably won't know this, we've been decimated in the last month or so with injuries to key players. We've just needed some bodies in the building. We've been in a desperate need this week because yeah. obviously our cut-off time to sign players was Thursday just gone. It was a little bit, you know, quick, but the, the one thing I would say is like the, the, the professional clubs in terms of the Premier League clubs and Portsmouth, who's normally our go-to, they've been as good as gold and um, I can't thank them enough. But it's, it's not easy because these players are young and they're learning and it's a big change for these boys, you know, I'm not saying oh, we've got a great level, yeah. but it's a change from under 18s, under 21s and even under 23 football. They find it so much more competitive and so much more physical. And that for me, it, it, you know, if I was a manager of a, a league club around here or anywhere, I'd be looking at the local teams similar to our, to try and get these younger lads out playing because they always feel if you're playing against men, it doesn't matter if the standard's great. They're just coming up with that physicality that they normally get in the first team. And it's it's so it's so important, I feel, for the development of players to do that. Ollie, you've joined from AFC Wimbledon. How's your first week been? Really good. Really good. Last last week was a poor start in terms of the first half, but we built it back well. We we had Thursday off and now we've got a good couple of games coming up, so we're really looking forward to it. What's the loan purpose? The loan purpose is to gain men's football, to develop on and off the pitch mentally, physically, socially, and yeah, gain that men's experience. So I'm able to develop when I go back to Wimbledon, hopefully um, push on. You mentioned the social aspect. What's the changing room like? Compared to how it is at Wimbledon, it's a lot more bubbly, a lot more harsher words and uh, <laughs> interesting stories. I love the changing room here. Uh, it's 
it's bubbly, it's bouncy, the music's great, and yeah, it's really positive. Did you have to do initiation? No, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> I'm hoping not. Hopefully today's not the day. Have you got something up your I, sleeve just in I case? I've got my singing voice on today, so I no, I hope not. How do you think this loan move can help you in your football career? Oh, massively. As, as my previous loans have, they've just gained more experience in men's football with the dirtier side of the game that you don't get in academy football. Even, even the mental resilience of it, for instance, on Tuesday, going 2-0 down and having to go against the odds and bring it back. So, yeah, yeah it's a lot, lot of things to take from it. Did anything surprise you when you first came in? The pitch. The pitch is <laughs> pretty good, to be fair, especially on Tuesday. As it's holding up well, isn't it? It looks nice, yeah. nice and flat. Considering what it was Tuesday, Tuesday, it eventually turned into a mud bath, but <laughs> it was, it was, when I turned up, I was surprised about how, how well the ground is. And also, I was surprised about how welcoming the players were as well. They're very welcoming. So what did Robbie have to say to you when you signed from AFC Wimbledon? He's actually said and changed you before the game, just express yourself, play with the freedom, which I'm really happy with really happy with and um, yeah I can't wait to get going today. Do the clubs give you any instructions on what they hope to achieve from the loan yeah. deal or is it just to play minutes? <laughs> yeah no I think it's to play minutes but I think they'll do their own work on the team as well you know they, they'll be thinking well we're going to send in there and they play a little bit route one and they're, they're a bit too aggressive and they're all six foot seven and you know <laughs> they, they go off long throws yeah. and corners and stuff then you know that might be an element where they think that's just not what we need for the development of a player and I think we're in that fortunate position that we don't and I'm not saying this is right or wrong yeah you know we don't tend to play like that we try to tend to play the game out on the floor and we, we give our younger lads the license to express themselves and to be honest you know if you've had 200 300 appearances at any level you're going to make mistakes gotta get the ball in Tommy and Dan Gifford so we need to make sure we've got people that are making unselfish runs attacking the back of the defense ball goes down there can I attack him behind first but it's about these lads making their mistakes and putting themselves in that position to make mistakes, to learn from it. And I always feel everyone's going to make mistakes, but it's how quickly you learn from it and how quickly you don't do the same thing again will determine how good of a player you're going to be. So what did you say to the boys there? We're just talking there in general terms, like I say, about their body positions and you know facing the way they want to play. Uh, a lot of times we've got boys that just don't face the right way of play and it just takes that touch. And then when you're playing a little bit, more games than maybe the academy games, it's just a little bit quicker at certain times. If that can help them just by an extra half a second, then they don't lose the ball and they'll play well. So hopefully we'll uh, take that to the coach. So what can academy pros expect when they join a non-league side on loan? I think it's the changing room environment. Just kind of having the kind of more influential players in the changing room that have been about and probably just learning from them and listening to them um, because they've got great understanding and knowledge of the game. Um, we're going to get good experience, high intensity at this level. It's pretty decent, good standard. Different sides of the game, physical. Definitely a good experience. Obviously, it's more competitive and the group of lads that you're coming to as well will help you get on with that, but it'll be a great leap and stone for your career. Well, high intensity, passion and the fans won't ever stop. All it's going to be is obviously they wouldn't have played much adult football and it's going to be a lot more physical. Like every team in this league is the same really in terms of big lads up front, big lads in the middle and big lads at the back. So it's just the physical side of things really. And your brother, yeah. Jasper, is a prime example of players that can go on and kind of play in the EFL. Yeah, so he obviously played at Worthing 15 till he was like 19 and then yeah, now he's playing Wickham. What's your ambition? Just enjoy football really. I like it here. <laughs> What's it like poncing all your brother's money to have a living? It's all right. It's not bad. <laughs> is it finding the right character as well for the loan move? It's a, it's a really good question because it's very difficult at that age. You know, you don't know what you're going into. From our point of view, we need players to come in the building. Then you're judged on that. And, but you're open that, and I always feel that any good character will jump on board with the, situ the circumstances they put in yeah. and how they deal with that. And I think sometimes our, our level compared to what these level play at leagues, it brings you down to earth and to understand that what goes on here is very difficult as well and you have to adapt quickly. And like I said, you go back to it, if you adapt quickly, you'll end up being a better player than not adapting. It's not just about picking up loan players. The club managed to sign former Bournemouth under 21 player, Matt Burgess, who just last year was training with the first team before being released in the summer. So what happened at Bournemouth? What did the club say to you? So after my scholar, I got my uh, first professional contract. I then got another year after that. Um, and unfortunately, at the end of that, they just said, I think it's best to uh, part ways because we don't see you getting in front of Jefferson and um, Lewis Cook and um, playing in the Premier League at uh, the present time. So, I mean, you can't really argue with that. And uh, yeah, Bogner come in for me soon after that. And I thought, why not get out, experience men's football and try push on and get up the ranks that way. Wakes him down, his ball speed and runs. So that is essential. If you don't have that, we ain't gonna do it.
say. How different is it playing under 21s football and playing in the IFMI and Premier League? I mean, it's, it's two completely different contrasts of football at the end of the day. You know, you go to an academy game and it's lovely, nice football. Not saying that it's not here as well, because we, we try and play football, but it's a real different side to the game. Physicality, set pieces are massive. I mean, it's just a completely new world, really. Tommy Elphick played for Bognor Regis. Did he have much to say about giving you some advice when coming here? Before they signed me, actually, Jack, the owner, called Tommy, because he knows him quite well. and. Um, he just asked what he thinks of me and Tommy spoke highly of me apparently so that's nice to hear because in my final year I worked with Tommy at the start of the season and him and uh, Sean Cooper were a great partnership and I loved playing under them so yeah it was good. And what kind of player are you? How would you describe yourself? Ball carrying midfielder I'd say. I like to break a line with a pass and a run, running past the player. In the final third more as an attacking midfielder I would say. Um, so yeah. The fans love you, don't they? <laughs> I guess so, yeah, it's a great song, that. And the gaffer walked past a minute ago and said we could do with a few more Matty Burgesses in our side. Technically, you, you're rated very highly here, but how much influence has he got on your development as well? I, I think the gaffer is brilliant in what he does for me. I think he's very encouraging. He knows the type of player I am and he sort of lets me express that on the pitch. And I think that's all you want as a player, sort of license to express yourself because once you have that I mean you put in good performances and you just you can really enjoy what you're doing so yeah he's a massive part of me playing well me trying to push on for sure. So you were here on loan last season from Pompey yeah. so what have you got released in the summer? Yeah I got released in the summer and then uh, obviously I've come here I was at Eastbourne wasn't really getting game time wasn't really enjoying my football so I decided to come back in because that's where I enjoyed it the most and Signed here, I've loved it ever since. And how much can you benefit from playing at non-league level? Oh, massively. Physicality, the speed of the game, you've just got to be on it 24-7. How are you finding this level? Oh, I love it. It's really good. Obviously, been, obviously when I come here, I was really young. Yeah, I struggled at the first, but over, over time, it's got better and better, so it's good. Obviously, you've come from a highest yeah. level of playing football. How do you put your ideas into lads that have never reached that and are now playing at step three? To be honest, it did take a while for me to, to adjust to because it's like everything, you, you just know how you feel like you play the game and how you've played the game. And luckily for me, I was fortunate to play at the high level. And for these lads, they're aspiring to be that or to get as far as they possibly can. So it's, it's just all about, you know, giving them the experience in terms of how you played the game or in certain situations, positional wise, or, you know, you always try to give that, you know, the help. How do you like your team to set up and play? Yeah, we like to play. We, you know, we, we tend to try and get the ball down and play. And what we are is a, we are a football club that tries to incorporate younger lads who have maybe been released from professional clubs or younger lads from the area and, and get them playing a style of football in a certain way that we feel the game should be played and I think that's not just down to me that's down to Jack from years and years ago and obviously Jamie who's my assistant manager now he, he had the club as well uh, he was the manager you know five or six seven years ago so we like the ball to be played on the deck and we like to play entertaining football and I think the supporters have known that and I think we we stick with that because I think if you asked probably every team in our level if you're going to go to Bogner, you're going to get a footballing game. You don't always win, but yeah. you know we try and play football in the right way. And what are your manager aspirations? I know you've been here for a little while yeah, yeah. now. Do you have ambitions <laughs> to go high? Obviously, you'd love to do it with Bogner, but for your personal development as a manager, where do you want to be? You don't take anything up in life, do you? Just to, to you want to be comfortable, of course you do, but you, you try and do well and, and whatever follows with that, follows with it. But I've been very fortunate with a football club that is, is back me. I've got a fantastic chairman in Jack Pierce. I'm so lucky to manage a football club yeah. at, uh, like this and whatever happens, happens. But the most important thing for me is I feel I'm really privileged to, to look after this football club. And what would be your advice to any players that are playing in the non-league system that are looking to make that step up? Always, always treat every instance with respect, whether it's a football club or whatever, always treat the level with respect and never stop listening and learning because from my point of view, if, if, you know, if, I'm, if I'm a Portsmouth player or a Brighton player or a Bournemouth player and I come down to this level and I don't respect the coaching or I don't respect the manager or the way of playing, it, I always feel like it doesn't stand you in good stead. And yeah. One thing I would say is we've had a number, certainly since I've been involved with the club, we've had a number of players from all them clubs I've mentioned that have come here. Some of them sink, some of them swim. And you normally see the good characters with a good mentality treat people with respect and respect the game tend to go further than what the lads who, who don't respect it.